In modern fantasy, orcs are usually just another race. They're normally defined by their martial prowess, they value things like honour and strength, and quite often they're held in poor regard by other peoples. But not in Tolkien's world. Orcs are the bad guys, plain and simple. We're not supposed to feel bad when they get mowed down by our brave heroes. But this raises the question, were Tolkien's orcs capable of being good? And if yes, were there any good orcs? Now, this question isn't a simple matter of yes or no, because Tolkien never came to a definitive decision as to what orcs actually were. In fact, Tolkien had no fewer than six different origin stories for orcs, and each one of them actually had major ramifications for the wider universe. For example, the earliest and most obsolete origin for orcs is that they were created from stone, heat, and slime. In this version, orcs were inherently evil and were only fit to be destroyed. But this version of orcs only appears in Tolkien's drafts, as well as the published Fall of Gondolin. The most well-known origin of orcs is that they were either bred in mockery of elves, or that they were actually corrupted elves themselves. These are the versions of orcs that appear across most of Tolkien's writings, The Hobbit, The Lord of the Rings, and The Silmarillion. And when Tolkien was writing these stories, he once again wrote orcs as inherently evil, which is why there are no good orcs in these stories. There are times when orcs display qualities that can be considered good. In the Urukai chapter, Ugluk demonstrates great loyalty and discipline, and the Moria orcs are said to have joined his band in an attempt to avenge their chieftain, who Aragorn slew in Moria. Clearly, his loss has upset them. That being said, these traits are still expressed in the clear pursuit of evil. However, Tolkien ended up changing his mind, as he did a lot. His main issue was that if orcs were corrupted elves, then they would still have a soul, and all souls came from Iluvatar. This concept clashed with Tolkien's Christian beliefs, which he expresses in Letter 153, written in September 1954. They would at least be real physical realities in the physical world, however evil they might prove, even mocking the children of God. They would be Morgoth's greatest sins, abuses of his highest privilege, and would be creatures begotten of sin, and naturally bad. Brackets, I nearly wrote irredeemably bad, but that would be going too far, because by accepting or tolerating their making, necessary to their actual existence, even orcs would become part of the world, which is God's and ultimately good. Close brackets. So Tolkien couldn't have orcs be corrupted elves, but also be inherently evil, it went against his own beliefs, and it kind of undermines the power of Iluvatar. This meant Tolkien needed a new origin for orcs, and he found one. He decided instead that they would be corrupted animals. They would be pre-existing creatures that Morgoth corrupted and raised up, much like how Manwe raised up the eagles, or how Orome raised up Huan the Hound. They would be soulless creatures with limited free will, with the ability to act beneath the umbrella of evil, but not beyond it. However, this wasn't even the final change. In Tolkien's last writings, he decided that orcs would be corrupted men, and that some of them may have even had an elvish strain. We see evidence of this in The Lord of the Rings, where Saruman has created half-orcs. The main issue with this theory is that it doesn't fit into the main timeline that appears in The Silmarillion, given that men appeared long after orcs first did. But Tolkien was also in the process of rewriting the timeline to have men awaken at a much earlier date, so that this theory would make sense. However, like the theory that orcs were originally elves, the orcs being corrupted men theory has the same issue that orcs would have souls, and therefore could not be inherently evil. Okay, so how does all of this help answer the question? Well, the answer to the question depends on the origin of orcs. Simply put, if we use the theory that orcs were corrupted animals, then the answer to the question is, no, orcs were not capable of being good. They were basically automatons that acted within a certain parameter which had been defined by the Dark Lords, Morgoth and later Sauron. They were mimics, not capable of independent ideas beyond the capability that their masters had allowed for them. But if we use the more commonly held theories that orcs were either corrupted elves, men or both, then the answer becomes a lot trickier. If something is not inherently evil or irredeemably bad, then by that definition it should have the capability of being good. Therefore, orcs would then have the capability of being good, even if it is naturally suppressed to the point of being barely existent. So if that's the case, given that there have been millions of orcs that have existed, why did we never come across a good one? Personally, I think this is quite easy to explain. 
All of our first-hand glimpses into Orcish society reveals how violent and self-destructive it is, to the point of where it can't sustain itself without the control or influence of a Dark Lord. Our first-hand glimpses also reveal that Orcs really only value two things, strength and cunning, both used for the purpose of violence. Traditionally positive traits such as compassion, selflessness and forgiveness would be weaknesses and would serve only to get one killed. In other words, if there was an orc who leaned towards goodness, then there's a very high chance it simply wouldn't survive in orcish society. And even if an orc with good traits did survive orcish society, there's still an incredibly low chance it would ever be discovered. Just because an orc might have good traits, it does not mean it would necessarily like elves or men, and therefore seek them out. In fact, Tolkien explicitly mentions that very few orcs ever surrendered to elves, largely because Morgoth had convinced orcs beyond refutation that elves were crueler than themselves, and would only take captives to torture or eat them. And while elves were expected to follow the principle of mercy, even with orc captives, they didn't always follow those rules, especially in times of war. So realistically, we never come across any good orcs because the odds for it are so monumentally low, Firstly, there must be an exceedingly rare case of an orc naturally gravitating towards good instead of evil. Secondly, said orc must survive the horrors of orcish society. Thirdly, said orc must actually come across elves or men. And lastly, said orc must survive the encounter and end up getting taken prisoner. To say it's not very likely would be an understatement. To finish off this video, I want to talk about a hypothetical scenario, one that actually gets asked a fair bit. If an elf was to come across a baby orc and then raise it in elven society, would it become good? The answer, I'm not sure. Given orcs are inherently evil, if raised in a good environment by good people, then an orc should have the ability to grow up into a decent person, no matter how absurd that might look like. However, I would still cast significant doubts on how well it would work, considering the fact that orcs are creatures that have been twisted and corrupted beyond recognition of what they were supposed to be. It's very likely that this orc would have a significant amount of self-loathing, and while their good upbringing might neutralise the violent and destructive tendencies that orcs generally have, it would not repair the damage that has been done at a fundamental level. I would wager that it would not be long before this hypothetical orc either kills itself or runs away where it would likely meet an untimely death in the wild. Ultimately, not really worth the effort. All that being said, there are sort of good orcs that have appeared in adaptions of some of Tolkien's work. In the Shadow of Mordor games, there is an orc named Ratbag who, whilst cowardly and self-serving, does willingly help the protagonist on several occasions. And in The Lord of the Rings Online, the player character comes across several orcs who either willingly or unwillingly aid them during their journey, once again, usually for a self-serving reason, but the fact that they're even willing to cooperate might reveal a level of goodness that most orcs simply don't have. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it interesting. I don't have much else to say, thank you for your continued support, cheers, farewell, and remember, if orc genocide is a war crime, then the good guys are definitely guilty.